every year there are a lot of accidents when the electric motors and the model airplanes that we fly come on when you're not expecting them to and they, they cut you because when they come on they tend to co come on they can easily come on full power very quickly and you know there's different reasons why you may need to have power on the system uh, of course you, you might be about to go and fly in which case you know you really just need to be careful um, but it, in my case I normally power up the system when I'm a, a either setting up it, uh, doing the initial servo setup or I'm adjusting something in the programming and I need to have power in the system so that I can see the effect of the programming. And there's a lot of solutions that folks have come up with over the years for avoiding accidents like this. And there's a lot of commercial solutions. They call them kill switches. And they, they're basically uh, a way of having a fuse or some sort of jumper in between the battery and the speed control so that when the jumper is not in place, there's no power to the system. And I, I think it's easy enough to do a, use a homemade solution. Just use the same type of connector that you use for the battery. Uh, if you use a fuse, make sure you use the right type. Um, but uh, you know, beyond that, there's some other solutions which, which I think actually might be better. Uh, I, my favorite solution, which is what I tend to do, is that I just grab a receiver battery pack, which you know I, I don't normally use, and just plug that into the receiver. You know, of course, you know the the motor battery is not connected. So what this does is that it lets me power the whole system. You know, the the receiver, servo, speed control, and I can turn on the transmitter, do all the programming that I need, and there's there's no danger of the motor coming on because there's no power going to the motor. So I, I think I think this is a great solution. You know, this battery pack came with my transmitter, and I have never flown it in an airplane, but I use it all the time for bench testing. Another very popular solution is to do a, a, a program a switch on your transmitter and it totally depends on the transmitter but uh, what I did here is that I programmed the rotor dual rate switch which I normally don't use anyway and I have a programmable mix going from the throttle to the throttle so that when the switch is on it forces the throttle to be at the lower setting you know whether it's 0 or minus 100 depends on the transmitter and it's not a bad solution, you know, it's something that you can, you can put into effect uh, right on the flight line, you know, right until, until you're ready to take off and then you flip the switch and then you can take off and it's pretty safe until then. You know, the downside is that the programming can be a little bit tricky and also you need to program it for every single um, airplane that you have. So, you know, it's a little bit of work involved. I think using the receiver battery for bench testing, I think it's excellent. And uh, another solution which I, I have also used once in a while is that I just disconnect one of the three motor wires and that's pretty f foolproof because with one of those co disconnected there is no way the motor is going to start you know even if you flip, flip the throttle lever it's a, there's just no way and, and it's easy enough to do and it's easy enough to also put it back so you know it's a, if you don't have a receiver battery handy just do that, you know, like at the field, you need to do some quick adjustments. Just disconnect one of the three wires, you'll be fine and you'll be safe until next time.